Hi, this is Rochelle with Live in Vibrancy, and today I want to dive into letting go. Uh, I've talked a little about letting go before, um, and giving up desire or letting go is not literally giving up your desire or letting it go. Um, and so I want to kind of present it in what I think is maybe a bit more of a tangible framework. So it's learning, it's literally learning to hold two separate mental spaces at the same time. The feeling of having it or knowing that it's yours because these are the same and not being attached to outcome, meaning that you're unbothered if you don't get it. And I know that the last, this last piece, it's often a tripping point um, in both people's understanding, but also uh, in their willingness because it can often feel really scary for people because they feel it means if they uh, are detached from outcome, they might not get what they want. Um, and they've made mean, they've made getting this mean something about themselves and they've made not getting it mean something about themselves and their life. Often people will say to me, well, my life is really great. It would be better if. Um, it would be better if is your tripping point. This is your attachment. Uh, often you can tell there's attachment because you may go in and feel I'm not attached to the outcome. However, it's your response to not receiving it that shows that you have some attachment to outcome. And I mean, this is really understandable. The human ego is addicted to certainty because certainty keeps you safe and it keeps you alive. And it's a protection mechanism. So it has value in some circumstances, but really not when you're manifesting because manifesting is done through faith and not certainty. So as long as your manifestation has meaning about you or your life attached to it, you're going to struggle to let go. And so letting, being attached, the, an unwillingness to let go is essentially um, coming from a space of lack. Um, and I understand that, again, there's a lot of misconceptions about letting go because we do have sayings. People will literally say, let it go. And what they mean is forget about it. But this is not what I mean. I don't mean that at all. This is not what it means from a manifesting perspective. Letting go is simply not forgetting about it. It's not not thinking about it either. Um, because although thoughts become things, manifest manifestation is very much guided by feeling, energy, and experience. And so I often like to describe it as a feeling experience. Um, and I've mentioned this before, when people um, tell me about the things that they're doing and how it feels frustrating for them and they feel exhausted and it's because they're, do they're in a doing cycle. They're not in a feeling cycle. And the feeling is a significant component of manifesting and it will torpedo the thinking aspect, and it often does it in sort of a bag over the head in the trunk sort of way, where you don't necessarily recognize that your thinking mind has been overtaken by your emotions. I um, mean, this often happens because we have such a disconnect from the mind and the body. And so we think that we are logical beings, but it is actually very, there's a lot of research that shows us that we are very much emotionally driven and we are particularly susceptible when we are not connected to our body and our emotions because that is the unconscious mind. And so we are driven by the unconscious. There are a lot of meanings and behaviors and feelings Feelings that we don't necessarily have access to because um, it's simply easier for us to to just look away and so if your affirmations uh, or your your sats or your other techniques aren't working for you it's likely because the biggest component component <laughs> blah blah I can talk uh, feeling it's yours isn't happening because your resistance to surrendering or letting go keeps knocking you out of the structure it's knocking you out of your assumption and because manifesting, it's not personal. There is no, maybe it doesn't work for me. There is no, um, maybe manif if manifesting works, then the point is you're just not in the structure that's aligned with what you're creating. And so um, I've included a link in, to a video that I made describing what your energy flow looks like when you're caught in attachment. Because the more you want something, the more you fear that you can't have it, right? So now you want something, but you fear that you can't have it. And so you're directing your energy in both ways. And so by letting go, you actually remove this from the equation. And now your energy is all going to where you want it to. And so if I were to illustrate your energy and what you're creating um, in that instance, it looks like this. 
So here you are, you're creating, and then we have like a dip. And here we go, it goes along again, and a dip, and a dip, and here, and you might even have a high. And this is because the energy of attachment, so referred to in some teachings as excess importance, is sending your energy in different directions. So at best, it's slowing things down. At most, you are veering off in a completely different direction. And this is why I talk so much about literally the key to everything is inside of you. I don't want you to look outside of you for the evidence because all the outside of you has ever given you is your limiting beliefs. <laughs> the inside of you is where your guidance is. And so it's really important to be able to learn to follow that compass. And so I want to try to explain letting go in uh, using a metaphor to um, sort of help kind of clarify what I mean um, by letting go so that you can understand maybe what it is from um, the perspective of feeling. So letting go is re releasing attachment, negative energy, fear, doubt. So it's entirely about the energy. It's not about not wanting something that you're creating, but to change the quality of that desire from wanting to knowing. So I'm a shoe girl because sometimes I'm a cliche. <laughs> and so I want you to think of your favorite thing. I'm going to use shoes in this example. Um, and if you're not a shoe person, then that's fine. Just think of something that you own that you really enjoy. So this is mine. This is my favorite pair of shoes. I manifested these shoes before I even knew manifesting was a thing. So, all right. <clears throat> Bring your favorite thing to mind. And again, I'm going to use shoes in this example. Um, so do you give that item much thought? Probably not really because you already have it. So now I want you to imagine that you're at someone's house and that item, you've brought it with you. And so in this case, we're using shoes. <laughs> Your shoes go missing. Now, how do you feel about it? Do you feel the same as when you had them? Probably not. You're probably concerned about where they are. Will you ever see them again? Can you get them back? How you're going to find out who took them? And that feeling is really different from when you had them. And so having them was probably more like enjoyment and appreciation or just that calm state of like just being. You just have them. I certainly know that's how I feel about my shoes. I just go to my closet, pull out the box and put them on. I don't have to worry about them. I don't have to think about them all day. I don't have to visualize about them. I don't have to affirm about them. And so when you have something, you're really unbothered about not having it. You're not focused on it. You think about it in much of a relaxed way. When I think about my shoes, it's not like I never think about them, but I think about them in a very relaxed way. Sometimes I think about them in an appreciative way because they are my favorite. <laughs> and when you learn to let go or surrender, you think and feel about your manifestation in the same way you currently think about your favorite item because you have it. You don't fear, you don't worry, you're not pushing energy, nothing. You're relaxed and you're pretty whatever. And I understand that this is the challenge. <laughs> and so, and I know that your analytical mind is possibly to say, well, that's because I have it. And it's not wrong, but that feeling is also the way you create things in your life. Because manifesting isn't like tearing the house apart looking for those shoes. It's like that moment when you stop looking and you decide to just chill for now and just look again later and you're relaxed, and you know you have other shoes, and you remind yourself not to worry, and you might take that breath, and you'll find them. And then the next room you walk into, there they are. <laughs> have you ever done that with your keys? <laughs> That's the energy. You're not forcing or trying. You're literally just being. You're relaxed, and you know they'll show up. And if you've mastered this piece, then you might even be appreciating those shoes while they're missing. Like someone in my group suggested for finding lost items. And full disclosure, I used to do that with my cat because we lost him a few times. And that's a completely different story because we didn't lose him at home. Um, so I just, manifesting everything is done exactly that way. And so I want you to start with managing your energy and your emotions because they're connected. And that's the magnet. Without it in your thoughts, or sorry, without it, your thoughts, I'm on a roll today. Without it, your thoughts are like a raindrop falling into a stormy ocean. It gets lost in the waves. 
but when you're calm or you're joyful, it's like that same single drop of rain is falling into a crystalline surfaced pond. And I'm going to wrap this up with a quote from Neville that just sort of fell into my lap while I was thinking about this video. Believe in the reality of that imaginal act. It may happen tomorrow. It may happen the day after, or a week later, or a month later. It has its own appointed hour, and it is ripening and it's going to flower. So don't be concerned. Leave it alone and it will come to pass. I catch the feeling if I were what I want to be. What would the feeling be like if? Just as though it were true. And dwell in that end, even though reason denies it and your senses deny it. You turn your back upon the doubts. That is your senses and what reason dictates. That's the hell or the devil or Satan in the world. That's the doubt. So you turn your back upon it and you walk as though things are as you want them to be. And living in that assumption, it slowly hardens into fact, even though in the moment of the assumption it was denied by reason. An assumption well thought, if persisted in, will harden into fact. You learn to assume and you learn to persist in the assumption and it will come to pass. And to do this, you have to let go of the fear and let go of the doubt and let go of the perceptions that conflict with living as you want it to be. And if your internal self, your identity, your concept of yourself doesn't align with living as though it's happening, your energy will be out of alignment. It will be up and down and all around, and you'll begin persisting in the wrong structure. And so I am also going to link a video uh, that I have made talking about the structure of manifesting. And because I always forget, uh, if you've made it this far into the video, uh, please share, like, or subscribe uh, to help other people find this video and to find this information. And have a fantastic day.